read this sentence right here. Go ahead and read it out loud and see if it makes sense. Now, did that make any sense? Were you able to read it? No. No, but you were able to understand the words, right? But not the sentence? Yes. Yeah. So this is the difference between being able to simply read words and understanding the text, which is like comprehension, what we're going to be talking about today. So our object for, or objective for today is what are comprehension strategies? Comprehension strategies are placed in the three categories, which is organizational, inferential, and metacognitive. So comprehension strategies, um, I really liked what uh, Morrison and Wilcox had to say, and they said that it can be teachers can effectively teach when reading and discussing with the whole class in small groups or like in many lessons. And also they said that the following of a release of responsibility patterns like teacher modeling, scaffolding, facilitating, and guided student practice. Um, also, Trabasso and Bashar talked about um, how com I'm sorry, com comprehensive strategies are specific learning procedures that foster active, competent, self-regulated, and intentional reading. Um, in our book, you saw this picture of the three different categories listed, which were the organizational, the inferential, and uh, metacognitive. The first one that we're going to talk about is organization strategies, which um, listed identifying uh, main ideas, summarizing, recognizing text structure, and recognizing stance. The one that I just kind of want to focus on today was uh, main idea. And main idea is determining what is most important in the text whenever you're reading. Um, you can stop during your oral reading of a text and thinking aloud what was most important in the section you were reading. So basically, the main idea is what the text is about and details is the evidence that supports the main idea. Um, so here are some activities that listed in our book for Morrison and Wilcox about creating a title, comprehension, process, motion, read and talk, write, story maps with graphic organizers. Um, I kind of want to talk about graphic organizers for a minute and that they are, they provide a visual representation for what is presented in the text and they also help children focus on what is important and give them a way to summarize what key features that they notice. Um, my article that I looked up by record, he did um, an article on graphic organizers and relating it to social media, kind of just to remember how today we need to remember the error that they're learning and that it relates to social media. So don't just focus on like a single like Venn diagram or something, relate it to what they're interested in. So before you is a little um, worksheet of a story map that we're gonna do real quick and listen to. It's of the three little pigs. I want you to try and fill it out as an example while you're listening to the story. I'm the awesome mother pig who has three little pigs. The three little pigs grew so big that their mother said to them, you are too big to live here any longer. You must go and build houses for yourselves. The first pig chose to build his house of straw. He said, now the wolf won't catch me and eat me. The second pig chose to build his house with sticks that was stronger than the first pig's house. He said, now the wolf won't catch me and eat me. The third pig chose to build his house with bricks that was stronger than the second pig's house. It took him a long time to build it, but it was a very strong house. He said, now the wolf won't catch me and eat me. The next day, the wolf came to the house of straw. When the first little pig saw the wolf coming, he ran inside his house and shut the door. The wolf knocked on the door and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the first pig. Then I'll huff and I'll buff. And I'll blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed. The house of straw fell down and the wolf ate up the first little pig. Next 
stayed in the old cave in the house of sin. When the seven little pigs saw the wolf coming, he ran out inside his house and shut the door. The wolf knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the second pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed and the house of sticks fell down and the wolf ate up the second little pig. Next day the wolf came to the house of bricks. When the third little pig saw the wolf coming, he ran inside his house and shut the door. The wolf knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, said the little pig. Then I'll puff and I'll huff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed. But the house of bricks did not fall down. So he tried again and again and again, but he failed. He said, little pig, I am going to eat you up. I am going to climb down your chimney to get to you. The little pig was very frightened, but he said nothing. Put a big pot of water on the fire to boil. The wolf began to come down the chimney. The little pig took off the lid from the pot. Into the pot fell the wolf with a big splash. And that was the end of the wolf. So there you got like an example of a story map and how to use it in your classroom. Um, now we're going to move on to inferential strategies. Um, these are predicting outcomes, drawing conclusions, making connections, creating mental images, and asking and answering questions. The one I want to focus on today is making connections. Um, students need to be aware of making connections with their, from the text with themselves, from the text to something else, like another book, or also to real world situations. Um, this is the one that's most common used in classrooms. Um, Keen and Zimmerman said children make connections when they relate to, relate to associated ideas or concepts. Um, here are also some more activities. Um, you can do read with a purpose, point of view, modeling predictions, reading detective, a Venn diagram, questioning the author. Um, also, the one that Mel, uh, Morrison and Wilcox kind of emphasized on most in our book was inferencing. And that's really important for our uh, students to understand while going through uh, their books. That way they can grasp a better understanding of what they're reading. The third one and final one is the metacognitive strategies. Um, these two are monitoring and uh, fixing up. And Morrison and Wilcox talked about how this is self-monitoring of one's own thinking is often referred to as metacognition. So it's saying, how, have you ever read an entire page of text and then asked yourself what you just read because your mind was drifting? Like whenever you were reading, have you ever thought about that? Yeah, me too. Or that the sentence didn't make sense? This is monitoring your reading. So you're identifying problems and fixing them as you go on. And then the two activities that Morrison Wilcock mentioned were checking and clunking and thinking aloud. So we're going to do our Kahoot real quick. If you will close that this page. And I see everybody's already logged in. All right. Let's get started. So which is a comprehension strategy?
one's a little tricky. So graphic organizers help children focus on what is important, distract children and shouldn't be used, give them a way to summarize what key features they notice, or A and C are correct. Understanding the sentence. Like if you have a question, oh, I don't know what I read. 